the formation of the gas giant planets in our solar system, including the true behemoth that is Jupiter, has always been a bit of a mystery. However, a recent study using information sent back by the Juno spacecraft suggests that part of Jupiter's journey to biggest planet around involved, well, eating other planets. The usual story goes that from the leftover gas, dust, and rocks from the formation of the Sun, all of the other planets, including Jupiter, began to form about four and a half billion years ago. We think Jupiter and the other gas giants started from a few dust grains stuck together, and over time, gravity caused this to grow, collecting more and more gas and dust until it was a pretty big protoplanet. Once it got big enough, it started to collect lots and lots of gas from nearby and from further away, and eventually grew into the gas giant that it is now. Investigating what's actually below the thick clouds of Jupiter is notoriously difficult. We don't even really understand if Jupiter has a proper surface under those stripes, and if it does, we don't know where it begins or if it'll ever be possible for us to land anything on it. This Jovian, cloudy atmosphere is truly mind-blowing as well. All of the chaotic behaviour of all of the gases produce insanely beautiful, although presumably also deadly, cloud structures on Jupiter. The most famous of these is the great red spot I'm showing you here, which is at least 480 kilometres deep. That's 40 times deeper than the Mariana Trench, and it's wider than the diameter of the entire Earth. The mass of Jupiter is about two and a half times bigger than all of the masses of all the other planets in the solar system combined. Jupiter really puts the giant in gas giant. Now, thanks to data from the Juno spacecraft, which is orbiting Jupiter and its moons, we have a bit more insight into how this world could have formed. Juno's name, by the way, is actually a pretty funny joke from NASA. You see, Jupiter was a Roman god, and he was famously unfaithful and had lots of affairs. In fact, almost every moon of Jupiter is named after one of these lovers. Who was Juno in these myths? Well, that would be Jupiter's wife. NASA literally sent Jupiter's wife to check on him and his lovers, and I appreciate that joke. Anyway, Juno has been orbiting Jupiter since 2016, and it's close enough to use an instrument on board to measure the small differences in Jupiter's gravitational pull at different points in the orbit. Just like the Earth, Jupiter doesn't have a uniform gravitational field, and small variations in the density and composition of the planet lead to changes in the gravitational field around that planet. The data from Juno allowed scientists to model the interior of Jupiter, mapping the rocky core below those clouds, and they found that it very likely has a surprisingly high level of elements heavier than hydrogen and helium. To an astronomer, anything heavier than those two elements is called a metal, so we say that Jupiter has a higher than expected metallicity. This high level of heavy elements suggests that while growing, Jupiter actually consumed other baby planets as they themselves were trying to grow. Makes you wonder how many cosmic neighbours we've missed out on because Jupiter ate them up. And it also makes you glad that Earth is about 740 million kilometres away from this gaseous galactus. Before this study, the two theories for its growth were either that Jupiter was indeed eating up a bunch of small planetesimals, each a few miles across, to fuel its growth, or it consumed billions and billions of small space pebbles and grew slowly and steadily. The Juno data doesn't support the pebble-based growth mechanism, because once the thick, gaseous atmosphere was present on Jupiter, this would basically block any new pebbles from accreting onto the core of the planet. If this had happened, it would be really hard to get all of these heavy elements into Jupiter. Planetesimals, though, are often seeded with these heavier elements already, and also aren't stopped from falling into the planet's inner sanctum by the gaseous atmosphere, just because they're so much bigger they make it through. This can explain where lots of these heavier elements come from, and it also gives rise to the inhomogeneous gravitational field of Jupiter. It seems like the planetesimals eaten up don't mix well with the atmosphere or the original core, and so they sit around as lumpy, heavy things inside Jupiter. What pop sci articles are often calling corpses of baby planets, but it's not as grim as that makes it sound. It's just a bit of a lumpy core with about 10 to 30 Earth masses of heavy elements within the planet. The chaotic dynamics of the planet might churn up a small amount of these heavy elements into the upper atmosphere, but largely it stays in the core. This is all interesting for a couple of different reasons. First of all, we're learning about the grim and murderous past of our biggest neighbour, which I guess is good to know about. 
Secondly, it's likely that other gas giant planets, both in our solar system and exoplanets beyond that, grew in a similar way. So we're learning about the growth of a whole population of planets within the universe. I hope you enjoyed this look at Jupiter's childhood antics. Please subscribe if you did and be sure to leave a comment or any questions you have down below. And even let me know you made it to the end of the video by using the word gassy in your comment. Thanks in advance. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.